a very special Saturday session for you. Washington, my hometown, has long been home to incredible music. But for the past 35 years, one concert venue has been the heart of the city's live music scene. That's the 930 Club. Rolling Stone Magazine ranked it the number one big concert room in America. And we'll have a special performance from the venue in just a moment. But first, we take you about 20 blocks from here for a tour. The 930 Club has been a D.C. landmark and legend almost since it opened back in 1980. My first gig at the 930 Club, I was in a band called Dane Bramage. Dave Grohl, later of Nirvana and the Foo Fighters, went to those early shows as a teenager from the Virginia suburbs of D.C. To me, that was like playing Carnegie Hall. It was such a big deal because I'd grown up seeing bands there and it was an honor to play the place. It became the epicenter of alternative music in the nation's capital. R.E.M., Cyndi Lauper, Simple Minds, and the Ramones would all perform here at the 930 Club. The name came from its original address, 930 F Street. What role has the 930 Club played in this city? It put DC on the map as a music place. Bob Boylan, host of NPR's All Songs Considered, has another distinction. You were the first act on the stage. We were. It was uh, May 30th, 1980. Boylan's band, Tiny Desk Unit, inaugurated the club, then a sweaty little room in a century-old building. Official capacity, 199 people. So what was its magic? Uh, its magic was community. The community that embraced the burgeoning punk and new wave scene. It was this true sense of, we gotta be different. Concert promoter Seth Hurwitz bought the club in 1986, but as the scene grew, he began to lose bands to larger clubs with better facilities. So I thought, I'm gonna build the greatest club ever that they will never leave. Yeah. The challenge was is that the old 930 was this tiny little place with such a vibe, but we also needed to accommodate the big business of these bands now that this Alternative was not alternative anymore, now it was getting big. So in 1996, the new 930 Club moved into the old WUST Radio Music Hall, former home of a gospel radio station. The new space is bigger, but they wanted to maintain the club's intimacy for smaller bands. The solution... One, two, three! ...put the stage on wheels. So the 930 stage moves forward, backdrop goes with it, and the room shrinks, and but people don't know it. The new 930, which can hold up to 1,200 people, has hosted Dylan, Adele, the Red Hot Chili Peppers, and Radiohead. Every performance represented by an album in the club's Hall of Records. I wanted people to be able to come in here and search for shows they went to. Hurwitz also brought the 930's original bar, cut out of an old Elks Lodge, to the new location. When I go downstairs to that back bar, I mean, that's where I had my first vodka tonic, you know? To me, the 930 Club is one of the last great rooms in America. Seth has kept that place the way it has been and should be. I think that's why people enjoy going there, because it's different than, than another sort of sterile corporate venue. It's, it's 930 Club, you know? It is what it is. Victory. We were down two points there. I couldn't figure out what was going on. We got a victory. We got a beat on that.